Okay, so this video involves a little bit of maths. Uh, we're going to look at something called the chi-squared test. Now, this chi-squared test is used to test the significance of deviations between um, numbers which are observed in an experiment or an investigation and the numbers that were theoretically expected. So we have to do a test to see how close the observed are or how different the observed are from the expected values and see if that is significantly um, different, statistically significant. Okay, uh, it is particularly valuable in genetics to determine if the phenotype ratios uh, of the offspring fit with the expected ratios. So that's what we're going to look at here. This is the equation we're going to use. It may look a bit confusing, but it's actually quite simple when you work it out and, and lay it out in a particular table format that I'm going to show you. O is the observed result, E stands for expected results, and then you've got the sum of symbol there. Okay, so uh, here's the example we'll look at. Two yellow round peas were crossed together. The numbers of each genotype for the offspring were as follows. There were 328 yellow round, 96 yellow wrinkled, 99 green round, and 37 green wrinkled. Okay. Now, first thing to do is to form a hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis is always the same here, which is that there is no difference between the observed and the expected. There is no differences here. Okay. And the hypothesis is that there is a difference between observed and expected. Now, when observed is the same as the expected, then a chi-squared value will be zero. Okay, so as observed gets further and further away from the expected, uh, then the chi-squared value increases and increases and increases. Uh, and it's a certain point, a, th a sort of threshold value, which we'll, we'll talk about later on, um, that is when you can say that the, the differences are so much that it can't be just down to random chance and that there is definitely significant difference between the observed and the expected and therefore you need to reject the null hypothesis. All right. So in this case, we're expecting it to be Mendelian. We're expecting the results to be Mendelian. We're expecting a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So we've got our observed results, and then we know what our expected results are. Based on how many uh, offspring we had, 560, we can work backwards and uh, pull into this table, as I've done here, the expected results, which uh, are shown. Now, what we need to do is basically work through that equation and break it down and do it step by step. Okay, The best way to do this is in the table, as I've laid out here. So the first thing to do is to take observe and minus the expected from it. Okay, So I've done that in each case to form that column. Then very simply, you take that number and you square it for each one. Okay, And then the last thing to do is to take that number and divide that by the expected. All right. Then you just sum up all of those together and we end up with our chi-squared chi -squared value of 1.821. Okay, hooray! 1.821. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. Okay, we're going to need to do a little bit more work before we can say what that actually means. All right. So, we can take the value and look up the probability in what we call a chi-squared table. All right, so here's a, here's a typical uh, chi-squared probability table that you'll be provided with if you need one. Um, but uh, there's lots of little different numbers on here, different rows, different columns. We need to know exactly where we're looking at on the table. The first thing is to work out which row to look at. And to do that, we need to work out something called the degrees of freedom. Now, this is worked out by doing n minus 1, where n is the number of traits, which in this case was four. There are four different traits possible, okay, and therefore our n minus 1, our degree of freedom, is 3. So we're going to look at along that line there, which is highlighted. Then we need to look at which column we're interested in, which probability are we actually interested in here. Now, in biology, we're interested in the 5% line. That's sort of our cutoff, okay? So in this case, if we look at that column, which is 0 0.05, which equates to 5%, then um, the critical value is 7.82 for this experiment. All right. What that means is that if our value is higher than this, uh, then there is less than 5% chance that the difference between expected and observed is down to chance. Okay, A really, really small chance that, um, that is down to chance 
we're really, really certain that there's something wrong here, something different than what we expected, okay? So at this point, we'd say we are, it is statistically significant and we would reject our null hypothesis, all right? Our result uh, is actually around there on the table. It's a lot, lot less, okay? And this means that there is about 75% probability that the differences between observed and expected results are due to chance. So it's pretty much the differences that we saw are probably just down to chance. They're not uh, anything, there's nothing strange going on here. There's nothing obvious going on here. It's not statistically significant. Um, we haven't, it isn't higher than our 5% critical value. So uh, it's behaving in a typically Mendelian way and um, we would happily accept our null hypothesis.